back, Candace Silverman. You've seen my video on an overview about obesity and the role of weight loss surgery in obesity. I'm going to talk about the laparoscopic adjustable gastric band now. So just to let you know, this, this is actually what the device is. Uh, it's been a very commonly performed operation in Australia really for the last 15, 20 years. Uh, there are a lot of patients wandering around Australia with a gastric band in, and the majority of which have had really good weight loss results from it. The advantages of the band over the other weight loss operations is really, it is the safest weight loss operation there is as an initial procedure. So the chance from dying from having this operation is probably less or the same of dying from other routine surgery that we do, such as laparoscopic cholecystectomy or keyhole surgery to remove the gallbladder. But what surgery for the gastric band um, involves, it's keyhole surgery again, so you'd be fast asleep, i.e. a general anaesthetic. I use four or five small incisions, and with, incision, with these incisions, I take the band, um, and place it like a wristwatch around the top part of the stomach. I lock the band into place with the instruments and then attach this port to the abdominal wall. So that port would sit just on top of your muscle layer and you have some uh, skin or subcutaneous tissue in front of it and you can feel the port through that subcutaneous tissue and that port can be accessed um, to fill the band up with fluid to make it tighter or looser. So what will happen, you'll have the band placed, um, the operation takes about half an hour, most patients will go home the next day, you'll be on a fluid only diet for two weeks post procedure, onto a puree diet for another two weeks and you'll see me at the four week mark for your first adjustment. Now life with a band is different from your previous life. Uh, there are some rules that need to be enforced, otherwise you'll feel unwell. The main rule is that you need to chew your foods well. So you need to select the appropriate food types, chew the foods well, because if you don't, if you eat quickly and you haven't chewed the foods well, the foods will get caught in the band, you might feel like vomiting. Now there's some food types that won't fit through the band, no matter how tight or loose the band is. Um, that includes the white foods, breads, pastas that will form like a glue. There are other some food types that are notorious for not getting through the band, no matter how well you chew them, and they would include things like some red meats and dry meats such as chicken breast. But how the band works, um, it works by improving control of your appetite. So if the band's adequately adjusted, i.e. not too tight or not too loose, if you chew your food types well, what happens to the food when you chew it is that it actually slows as it passes through that band, it bubbles up and down, it passes through that band, and that slowing sends signal to your brain to let you know that you're not starving hungry. It won't necessarily make you feel full, but it'll take away that um, insatiable appetite that might have been an issue previously. I see the band patients every month until they feel like they're in the right zone, i.e. they're getting that sensation of um, appetite restriction um, and they feel uh, fuller with smaller portions and if I ask them if they're hungry in the morning, most will say they're not hungry in the morning. So that's when the band's at an adequate tightness. If the band's too loose, they won't feel like they've got a device in play. They'll say, I can eat what I, what I feel like um, and I have an appetite in the morning. If the band is too tight, um, patients will tell me that they have difficulty tolerating solids and they have an increase in heartburn or reflux symptoms. So we want the band in what's called the green zone, i.e. not too tight, not too loose. The band, and in terms of weight loss of the band, it happens quite gradually. 
and over a continued period and that's a good thing. You don't actually want to have your weight loss too steep or to be overshooting the mark with the band adjustments. You want the band, if anything, on the looser side or the tighter side rather than the tighter side, sorry. Some patients are very eager to have their band very tight because they feel that this will actually enhance their weight loss. But in fact it doesn't, it just means that they have difficulty tolerating the full texture diet and some of the more calorie dense foods, the more slippery foods might be able to get down easier. So patients say with a sweet tooth that like chocolates or ice creams, maybe the band's not the right operation for you because uh, it's likely you'll be able to get these foods down without feeling that restriction. The band um, has been shown to be better than diet and exercise alone in losing and maintaining weight loss. And it's probably a very good operation for around 80% of patients. Uh, unfortunately, with the band, there is a small subgroup of patients that never get that right feeling. So the band's either too tight or too loose. They don't achieve the weight loss with the band. There's a small group of patients too that need to have the band removed for a complication of the band. So it's important to realise that the band is a machine, it's a tool that requires maintenance. Um, the band may slip in position, so have a lower position on the stomach or the stomach might herniate or come above the band. Patients, if this happens to, they might say things like um, they're no longer able to tolerate the solids, they have, might have some pain. I would normally diagnose this with a barium swallow, so to drink some contrast to see where the band lies in position. And for patients that have had this, if they've lost weight well with the band previously and they want to maintain the band, I will do an operation to see if I can revise the, the band to put it back in the correct position. For patients that have never had success with the band and have had a slip from the gastric band, likely I'll remove the band, uh, let things settle down and a patient might then consider a, a second weight loss operation. The band uh, too, um, I'm just talking about complications from the band. As mentioned, initial complications, very uncommon. Um, there is described esophageal perforation. Uh, it hasn't happened to me or any of my colleagues. I think there'll be an, an unusual initial complication. Occasionally, initially, you might get some infections over where the port lies. Um, th this is considered serious because it's a foreign body and we don't want infections in this area. It might improve with antibiotics, but you might need further operations to actually remove the port or the band and have that replaced at a later date. Um, besides that, the initial complication rate's very low. Down the track, as mentioned, uh, you can have issues with failure of weight loss, band intolerance, slippage of the gastric band. The other complication that's known is something called band erosion. It's rare, it's a one percenter. It tends to happen at least after 12 months and maybe the band's been placed too tight or kept too tight over too long a period, in which case the band actually erodes into the stomach. Patients might be quite well with this. The reason we find it might be two reasons. One, they have a new infection over the wound that their port's maintained, or two, they might feel that they're no longer losing the weight that they used to. And the way to diagnose this is with endoscopy, so a flexible camera into the mouth um, and we'll actually see the band on the inside of the stomach. If this is the case, the band will actually need to be removed at that setting. But I'm very happy to manage patients that have had gastric bands. I've had a lot of experience putting bands in and also revising bands. And I think um, because Australia has a good history of bands and there's a lot of academia in regard to gastric bands, specifically in South Australia and Victoria, it's still a worthwhile operation. And if a patient that was morbidly obese and wanted to have this done, I'd be more than happy to do it. Um, the issue I have with a band is really that inconsistency in weight loss, um, i.e. the about one in ten patients um, that do all the right things have a good operation but can't achieve the weight loss desired with, with the gastric band. It might be an ideal operation to do it in a patient, say, that might be too high risk um, to have 
either a resectional operation like the sleeve gastrectomy or an anastomotic procedure such as the gastric bypass. It might also be a reasonable operation to do in a patient, say, that has a lower BMI. So um, at a lower BMI, say BMI 30 to 35, maybe with type 2 diabetes, I, they're not obese enough to warrant a drastic procedure. Uh, that's where the lap band might be um, something to be considered. But it comes to patient choice. Um, if a patient wants a laparoscopy just for gastric band, it's better than diet and exercise alone. Um, and I think it's still a reasonable weight loss operation.